All right, everyone, thanks for the uh, welcome. So uh, let's get started. So this presentation is going to be about um, Chinese mechanical locks, uh, obviously. So why do I call it an insight into a hidden world of locks? It's because the lock market in China hasn't really been, um, has always been kind of sequestered in its little bubble. So we really haven't got an idea of what, what unusual kinds of locks they have. So this is presentation, so it's gonna be talking about a little of this stuff. Okay. So general introduction. Uh, here's my disclaimer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not gonna um, waste your times with uh, an exceptionally long disclaimer. It's just that uh, I didn't get paid by any of these companies because I'm gonna be like bashing some companies while promoting others. So I didn't get paid by any of them. Uh, I'm not affiliated with any of them. This is strictly personal research. Also, um, yeah, uh, I did my best to try to make everything as factual as possible, but I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sure with some things, so this is my best guess. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Who am I? I am a small time lock collector. Um, I call myself small time because I only collect one type of lock, and that is Chinese locks, so. Yeah, that's me. Padlocks and Euro cylinders, which are, that's the main type of locks that I um, collect. I'm a Chinese lock specialist and researcher. So that's what I call myself when I talk to other people, you know. I'm a Chinese lock specialist and researcher. That's who I am. But uh, yeah, um, it makes me sound more special than I actually am, but uh, okay. Yeah, it makes it true, okay, yep. Uh, I'm a member of Tool. Um, I actually got in the membership application yesterday, so. I could say that. Yeah. I, thanks. Yeah, I'm certified now, you know. Uh, I am a lock picker. Um, not a good one at that, but still a lock picker. I can pick a master lock, and that's about it. So I can say that, too. And I'm 16 years old, so I've been uh, interested in locks since I was 10. So that's six years. Thank you. So yeah, it's been a while. And uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask them while I'm going through this so you don't leave them to the end. All right, some terminology. This is for the people that aren't really into locks. So I'm gonna be referring to these quite a lot. Some people call it other stuff, but this is what I call them. So a keyway is where the key goes in. They usually have a shape to it that uh, only that kind of key will fit in the lock. And the plug is the round thing where when you can put in the key, it turns. That's the plug. Um, I hope I got that clear. All right, and parts of a key. Um, this is a Chinese key, by the way, so I'm trying to use as many Chinese locks as possible in my pictures. The bidding is the cuts on the key. Sometimes it's engraved on the side as like a squiggle. Um, and let me get this laser pointer. Uh, the warding is this track that's milled in the key to get it to fit in the uh, keyway. All right, so that's that. And pins are two sets of pins that when raised to the correct height allows the plug to turn like that. Sliders are elements that slide when interacting the key instead of going up and down. And the sidebar is a rod or bar that locks the plug until the element has been aligned correctly, which is, yeah, that. So finally, that's the good stuff. Uh, into the Chinese locks. Uh, right, so um, let's have a small Chinese lesson. So um, I know. Uh, well, it's fitting, though. So. The first word means lock. So uh, well, the reason I'm saying this is because if you wanted to go and look up locks on Google, if you look up lock and Chinese, you're not going to get anything from China because they use a completely different wording system. So if you go on Google Translate, it'll give you a bunch of options. So this is the ones that you should select. So the first one, suo, is that, that one at the very top. It's pronounced suo. Oh, uh, gosh. Oh, sorry. Uh, that one is, means, it just means lock. So if you look at that, you'll get all types of locks. The second is gua suo, which translated literally means hanging lock, which is a padlock. The third one is suo xin, which is a lock cylinder. It literally means a lock heart, which if you think about it, is a lock cylinder is literally the heart of the lock. And lastly, we have yao shi, which is key. It means, uh, well, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. It just means key. Hmm. All right, next. Some many types of keys, some of the many types of keys. There are many, many different types of keys. These are the ones I'm gonna be talking about a lot, so here we go. 
Here are pictures of the keys. Um, they're not the best pictures, but I think we get the. F so here's the uh, terms that I used to call them, and some other people used to call them. This, the first one, is called a standard key. I call it the standard key. I don't know what other people call it. They might call it uh, something else. This is standard key because it, if you look in your key ring or whatever, chances are you'll have one of these on it. It's the most standard key. The cuts are on the side, like any other thing. Next one is slightly more unusual, the dimple key. This one has uh, cuts down the front of it, like, like that. I'm sorry, this laser pointer, uh, I'm, really, I'm sh uh, shaking while I... So that, it's cut on the side instead of on the, like, the top of the key. The third time is called the cruciform key. So this key is basically what happens when you uh, take four standard keys and put it in a cross, and that's where you get the cruciform key. The fifth type, uh, the fourth type of key is a disc detainer key. This one has angles cut on the side instead of um, cuts like that. And the last type is called a laser track key, which um, it's cut by a laser, which is called a laser track key. And it's like, it looks really weird and funky, which is the um, why. Uh, it's like cut, kind of cut like that. I don't know how to better explain it, so. All right, next. Oh, now underneath is what you'll see sometimes if you go on AliExpress, uh, which is a website if you want to buy locks from China, but they're not too great. So this is the English translation, so when you literally translate it. So the first one is they call it a Yale key in China. The reason they call it a Yale key is, if anyone can guess, does anyone know uh, the inventor of the lock? Well, a lot of people do. Linus Yale Sr. Yes, Linus Yale Sr. So that's why they call it a Yale key. The second one is called a computer key. They call it a computer key. In Chinese, it's also called computer key, 电脑钥匙, which literally means computer key. I have no idea why they call it that, so uh, I'm just going to go past one. The third one is called a cross key, for obvious reasons. The fourth one is called a Finland key. Now, disc detainers were invented in Finland by Abloy. Um, there's some um, security snobs are selling Abloy products downstairs, so uh, if you want to ask them about the history of Abloy, they probably know. But uh, if anything, the disc detainer lock was invented in Finland, so that's why they call it in China a Finland key. And the last one, they call it a blade and leaf key. I still, I don't know why they call it that, but um, uh, a, blade a, a blade or a leaf key. That's, uh, feel free to uh, interject if I. Uh, I'm just curious, blade key is a common term for a lot of people for the one on the left, the standard key. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, it becomes, well, in, when you go to China stuff, <laughs> yeah. Oh, pin tumbler key, yeah, that too. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Next, a word about Chinese lock company names. So they're usually unusual sounding. So they'll be kind of funny sounding when you uh, read it out. They're the worded out version of their Chinese names. So I will try to say the English name, the Chinese name, and the proper translation of the Chinese name so you get a sense of what the lock company is. And a word about packaging. Packaging is very important in China. Since there are hundreds of hundreds of different lock manufacturers in China, Packaging is how they present the lock to the buyer. So it's pretty important to see how they market their lock to the buyer. And we'll see a lot of weird things that they do to uh, try to market the lock. And uh, we'll talk about that in a couple other slides. And I think it's capitalism at its finest. It shows exactly how capitalism is supposed to work, except just in the lock market. <laughs> and a word about key control. This is a big thing in America, but not so in China. Key control is preventing someone from duplicating, duplicating a key without permission. So uh, usually institutions use this to prevent you from copying their dorm key or whatever. This is not a problem in China because there are hundreds of variations of the same type of keyway. So if you take the Yale keyway, there are hundreds of variations of that keyway. So a locksmith will not have basically a locksmith will have one or two types of blanks. The rest of them, you're not going to be able to copy. This is why when you buy locks in China, you're going to get six or seven keys with the lock because they know that you can try to duplicate it, but you're not going to be able to. So that's <coughs> Chinese key control. It works. <laughs> All right, characteristics of security in China. Ma uh, along with the key control, master keying in institutions is also very, 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 very rare um, because so I'll talk about that. How does an institution keep track of keys then? Well, we'll take a look. With one of those things, it's not fun. <coughs> so you can see from the girl's pain smile that uh, she probably has to open someone's door with that. 
So basically what it is is that all the locks have their own individual key and they're not master key. Master key is one, one lock, one key will open a bunch of locks. But no, in China, they just have one key, opens one lock, and that's it. So they'll hang a bunch of different keys along the side of that. And uh, they'll go, and uh, sometimes they're not labeled. I've had to use one of them before, and it took about 15 minutes to try all the keys in the lock. So it's not. Is there a reason not making a master key? Well, the reason is because most locks in China are like sealed shut. They're either pinned together or like welded together. There's no way to get them apart. And there are just so many different variations of locks in China. There are like thousands of different models of locks that it's impossible for a locksmith to stock any kind of pins or wafers to master key a lock. So a locksmith is not, basically all a locksmith does in China is not master keying or keying a lock. It's basically to get you in your house when, you know, or, or install a new lock when the need arises. That's basically what a locksmith does. All right, next. So now let's talk about the AB, the ABC, or the one plus one keying system. So all, nearly all of the uh, entrance door locks that you buy in China are, come with two sets of keys or three sets of keys, it depends. So the A key is always given to the contractor or the lock installer, and the B key is usually always sealed. It's always sealed, basically. Usually sealed, I say, because there might be one or two that's not sealed. And that package is given to the owner of the house. So while the contractor is building the house, the owner can also still get into the house. The C key is used to lock out the A key after they're done building the house. If, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? It's very similar to construction. It is construction keying. It is construction keying where uh, you lock out the... Uh, so basically what happens is that when you come in with your new key, the A key stops working. So the key that the, constr uh, the contractor, the lock installer has, will no, the guy will no longer be able to get into your house. And that's pretty good. And we'll see a lot of that with the locks that we talk about. Okay, the uniform national lock grading scale. Uh, uniform is in quotes because it's not uniform, but <laughs> they'd like to make it seem that way. Um, okay, so let's talk about it. So there are three official grades that are sanctioned by the Public Security Bureau, which is kind of like the FBI, which is kind of a weird thing because, you know, you never hear the FBI in the U.S. talking about how terrible Quickset is. But, um, well, in China, you got people like, like the public bureau literally comes out and says, this lock is terrible, this lock is terrible, don't use this lock, this lock is also terrible, this one's not that terrible, but you still you shouldn't use this lock kind of thing. So um, the official grades are A, B, and C. As you go down, it's better. So, when you, uh, so A is the worst. It has one minute of manipulation resistance and our regular pin tumbler locks or the simple dimple locks, which rhymes, and I like that. B is uh, slightly better. You get five minutes of pick resistance or bump resistance or whatever it is. And um, it's a pin, you get pin tumbler locks and a slider or a simple sidebar based lock for that. And um, Chao B or B plus is the best official standard you can get. So this is the one that if you're searching for locks on the internet, you're gonna wanna put this standard in if you want the good locks. It's kind of weird because manipulation resistance requirement basically jumps to 270 minutes, which is them basically saying that all the locks that are like basically impossible to pick in this time should go in that. Place. And you get complex slider systems, proprietary systems, all the weird stuff goes in that category. And then the non-official stuff. So if you ever see this, don't buy the lock because it means it hasn't been certified. A lot of people, a lot of different companies use that. So we got the C plus, which has no standard, the D, which also has no standards, and the D plus, which has no standards as well. Uh, but we'll see on some of the packaging that we talk about later, we'll see those designations on some of them. Okay, um, what kind of reputation do Chinese locks have over here? Yeah. It was interesting to see that letters go kind of backwards to what we might expect here. Yes, that is. Well, it's because that originally they only had two grades, A and B, and then they added a B plus and they might add a C. Uh, so basically they don't want to start from backwards. Otherwise they'll like have to do something like negative A or negative B. And that's designed to be sequential originally, just to differentiate. the different types of locks, that is correct. So what kind of reputation do Chinese locks have over here? I forgot to bring that padlock, so uh, but if you want to know what it was, it was a cheap 
Chinese lock with a plastic core and you could bang it open. It'll, if you stare at it hard enough, it'll open too. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's a summation of the refutation. So, does anyone want to say what they think of Chinese locks before this presentation? Oh, yeah, lousy. That's true. Everyone thinks they're lousy. Not all of them. They have some ones that are good. Yeah, they have some ones that are good, and we'll talk about that later. So, what can we say so far? Most of the locks that come out of China are not good. I agree with this statement. Most of the locks that you're going to find in the dollar store or in the Home Depot or wherever that come out of China are not good. It's the locks that stay in China that we're actually going to talk about, which this is the good stuff, the interesting stuff. And I uh, just spent 15 minutes probably talking about all the stuff. So let's go on. Insecure Chinese locks, why are they insecure? Because we have low cost production. Basically what they do is they try to make the lock as cheaply as humanly possible. Like it cannot be more cheap than whatever the Chinese have manu managed to think up of. Uh, casting versus milling, they'll cast the cylinder if possible. They'll mill out parts of the cylinder to try to save on some brass. Non-hardened parts, like a lot of the locks that I have in here actually. Uh, I don't know if I can get the document camera working. <coughs> it doesn't matter. It says hardened on the shackle, this uh, silver thing over here, but it isn't because it's easier to stamp hardened on the shackle than it is to actually harden it. <laughs> All right, and then we got inferior materials, fake brass, which is basically pot metal, and they spray paint a yellow paint on it so it looks like brass. I mean, if you go to the dollar store, you'll find some of them, and it's just, I don't know who they're trying to fool because you can only, if you have two brain cells, maybe you'd think that it's real brass, but it's not. Pot metal, which is zinc, it's really cheap, and you can melt the lock if you have a butane torch or something like that. <laughs> and plastic, which is, needless to say, should not belong in any kind of lock. Uh, and then we have simple machinery, low-cost tooling. So high quality, like Medico in the US, they'll use CNC mills to try to mill out the lock cylinder so it fits perfectly. In China, they usually have maybe a grinder in the factory, and they'll grind out something that looks generally like a padlock, but isn't. So yeah, that. Also, we've got clones of clones, which is basically some one factory comes up with a new design, or maybe they stole it from somewhere around the world. And another factory will see that lock and try to make an exact copy of it. But as you know, like copying files, if you copy the same file over and over again, it's going to get corrupted. So it's the same thing with this. So each time they take that design, they're going to try and make it cheaper. And then some other company is also going to try to take the previous design and make that one cheaper. And so in the end, we get the locks that, we'd, that end up in our dollar store and stuff like that. And tolerance problems, which is basically, um, well, needless to say, all of these equal the tolerance problems, which it makes the locks really loose or not work at all, which happens a lot. OK, now we're going to discuss the types of high security Chinese locks. So we've got, I, I like to say through there are three types. We've got the security through obscurity, which is, uh, I'm pretty sure in the hacking um, world they use this term. So basically you can't pick what you can't see. You can't pick what you can't, don't understand. So basically these locks are going to look really weird and stuff. And you're not going to know how to attack it because, well, it looks weird. We've got security through complexity, which is safety in numbers design. You know, have more of this and more of that and more of everything. It's better than having less. And then the last one, which I really like, this is the one that I prefer to, uh, the kinds of lock that most of the locks that I'm going to talk about are security through design, where they are designed to be secure. They, they take advantage of their weaknesses, which is tolerance problems, and they make it secure. So most secure designs are eclectic, which means they utilize two or more of these categories at once. Okay. <coughs> Let's, okay, now is the good part. Uh, after all this, we, we get to talk about actual lock design. So, yeah, none of, none of that boring stuff anymore. Uh, security through obscurity, some obscure lock designs. So first we have the smiley face keyway design. This ends up in the U.S. sometimes that we'll see maybe in some Chinatown dollar shop or it'll, you'll get it from AliExpress or something like that, a smiley face keyway, an evil keyway. But the reason I say it's obscure is because these two are both smiley face keyways. However, one is better than the other. Can you guess which one is better than the other? Yes, the left one. But to the average Joe, would you be able to tell at a second's glance which one is better? Oh, come on. OK, no. Yes, that is true. No, that's, that's the answer. All right. 
Yeah, but the, the one on the right is fancier, you have to admit. I mean, if I, if I was just an average person, I would go for the fancier lock, right? Does the one on the right say top security on it? <laughs> the one on the right does say top security. <laughs> Uh, top comes in on the very top, or below A, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, basically, what they, this design is cloning of that design. Basically, why I call it security through obscurity is they're trying to hide it. So, we have the really good design, which is basically, it's really hard to pick. Um, the gold atom design, if you don't know about it, you should look it up. It's really hard to pick. However, that one is really easy to pick, but basically what they tried to do is make it look as close to that as possible so it could hide in like, kind of hide behind the shadow of that one. Okay, so the next one. Okay, that's a blank slide. Oops, uh, you saw it. Oh, gosh. Uh, the Kunlun Power Grid Padlock. It's a very simple looking padlock. This one. All right, where's my laser pointer? So we see it's a brass padlock. These are used on the, by the Chinese power grids to secure their boxes. And it comes with this very simple looking key. It's just a barrel with a little bit on it. And when I first got this lock, I was like, and here's the keyhole. There's a little shutter in there that opens when you put the key in. And when I first got this lock, I thought, well, this would be super easy to pick. You know, I could just take anything, like a stick or something, and stick it in there, and it would work. But I tried for hours and hours of doing this. And in the end, I was so frustrated and I threw the key, and it stuck to a little metal notice board in my, um, in my bedroom. And I had to bang my head on the ground and be like, oh, I should have known. It couldn't have just been like a little bit. So in fact, um, if we can get the document camera working, how do we use the document camera, if that's possible? All right, never mind. Oh, I guess I'll, OK. How do I get this to show up on the screen, if that's possible? All right. beats, beats me, but it's probably that switch box right there. All right, I think it's going to explode if I play with it. This is, all right, uh, I'll just talk about it from here. Is there anyone from AV in this room right now? Yeah. All right, maybe I should have gotten that to work earlier. But anyway, there is a series of magnets in the key that uh, unlock the lock, and I didn't know that. And you probably wouldn't know that just by looking at the lock. So yeah, there's that. OK, so next is the next category, because there isn't really that many designs in China that utilize security through obscurity. Because as you know, once it's, once it's out there, once how the lock works is out there, it's pretty easy to um, be able to pick it. Oh, there we go. Uh, how do we switch it back, though? I'm just wondering. So who's in charge of the switching? OK, just, just ask someone to switch it, and magically they'll be like, whoop. Hocus pocus. You know. Okay. Security through complexity. Some complex lock design. So basically, I'll just remind you, is basically where they try to fit as many moving parts into the lock as possible to make it as hard to pick or as hard to manipulate as possible. So let's take a look at them. Okay, some simple complex designs, which is simply basically what the lock manufacturer is trying to do is trying to get it into the next grade without using too much of an effort which is um, a lot of companies do that, simply adding another element to make it look more secure. This innocent looking pin tumbler cylinder, which just looks like your standard lock that you might have on your house. However, if we look at the key, it says otherwise. Uh, you can see there's a little track grew engraved on the side, which also actuates 10 little sliders on the side of the lock. It's not particularly secure, but it adds another layer. This is try they're trying to go for the uh, complexity angle over here. And so what's better than one row of pins? Two rows of pins. <laughs> so what this company has gone ahead and done and is made another row of pins next to the row of pins. So there's that. This is also an AB lock, I should say that first. This is an AB lock, so the pink key is the construction key, and when and there's also a set, a couple like six black keys that I didn't, I don't have pictures of that. When you put in the lock, it locks out the pink key. These are clones of, of other designs from. This is an Australian design. I the other one I think was destroyed. Uh, I I. So? No, I think what happens is this is they're not really trying to copy the by lock design. I think it's just them trying to add another row of pins because also similar in design is a two-row dimple lock that also does the same thing. 
and one that has like kind of looks like the Schlage Primus, but it really isn't on the side. So they're not really trying to uh, copy any of the designs. Besides, uh, Bylock isn't that well known, but I I can't vouch for the manufacturer. Maybe they got a hold of the Bylock and try to make it look as similar as possible. Yeah, yeah, that is. But this is way low quality because it doesn't have the angle like the kind of curve to it. So this is really cheap. Anyone would be able to pick this uh, with anything, basically. So if you go downstairs to Tool, you'd probably be able to pick this. Comparing it to a Bylock, see? Yeah, I was going to say that. It's <laughs> OK, maybe I just contradicted myself, whatever. It's very, very similar to the Bylock. And I must admit, maybe they were trying to do something. But the Bylock key is cut, then folded into two. And this one, the uh, Chinese lock, I think, is, has, um, is milled down the center, which is quite strange, really. Oh, it's two different cuts. Uh, it's like kind of staggered, so they can fit the pins in. Uh, if you want to see these locks, you can just come downstairs. So I'll be there, and I can show these off. The Pan Rong blocker design. So this is a weird name, Chinese name. Pan Rong. Does it translate to anything? I think it means like a guard dog or something like that. OK. Well, I, didn't, I, I don't know why they just didn't use Google Translate, but OK. So this is the Pan Rong lock. It's a classic example of security through complexity. We've got over here a set of sliders on the back of the key. We've got 10 pins on the front of the key. We've also got this keyway blocker on the front of the key to block the keyway until the key is currently uh, fully inserted, which should go through the key. So yeah. So it looks pretty unpickable, but you'll notice that this lock is used. And why is it used? Well, because my uncle's house got broken into. And uh, this was the lock on their door. How did they get in if they can't access the keyway because of the blocker? Well, they used some tin foil and put it on the key, and they put it in, and it opened. <laughs> so this just shows how this might look good, and they advertise how many elements it has. It isn't the best. Now, an extreme example of a complex lock. This is an extreme example. You're not going to get a lot of these. This is super extreme. Uh, it only has one type of element, but uh, I'll talk about that. The Silock Key Slider Lock. This has known. It's, the Chinese name is Suo Xin, which translates into lock god. <laughs> but um, I think they're uh, going a little too far there. This lock key lock. So it looks pretty standard. It's got, uh, tracks, on, it's got tracks on this side, and it's got different tracks on the other side. It fits in this keyhole right here. Um, so uh, uh, can I have the document camera, please? Yay, OK. So this is what the key looks like, like that. So we've got tracks on this side, and when we turn it over, we've got tracks on the other side as well. So it might look normal, and here's the cylinder, and it works perfectly. I shouldn't, uh, I'm gonna put this down for a second. All right, okay, I'm gonna put this over here, and just talk into, okay, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna move this over here, so it works fine. It's uh, everything that a lock should be. It works, which is a miracle uh, considering Chinese lock manufacturing technology. Okay, so uh, back to the slide, please. Thanks. Okay, this lock key lock. So, what makes this complex? Well, how many sliders are in this lock? Question mark. One. Two. How many do you want to guess? Four, seven, Just... two, Twenty. <laughs> all right. These all seem to be pretty conservative. You're getting close. There are 48 sliders in this lock. 48 of them. They've managed to cram 48 different moving parts into this lock, which is amazing. And it has six locking points. They have two, it has two sidebars and uh, four little points that lock out and keep the plug in place. So this is what it looks like when you blow it apart. We've got sliders here, there, everywhere. We've got two sidebars. You can see in the red over there. 
we've got um, six uh, locking points right there like that. And yeah, the, we've got so many sliders. And basically what this says is it has six locking points. Over here it says it has two sets of sidebars. Over here it says it's got something anti-drill. And over here it says something about 48 sliders. Um, well, it's bump proof. It's fairly pick resistant. Uh, here's what it, the package that it comes in. I'll talk about the pick resistance later. This is the pack. So I was talking about packaging. This is what it comes in. It, it's called a blade lock cylinder. Quite a bit, but not too much. Uh, I, I can't. Yes, it's quite a bit by Chinese lock standards. But to us, it's a pure bargain. It's way cheaper. You could buy like three of these for the price of a Medico. So. Anyway, so they call it a blade lock cylinder. You'll notice that they use the designation Chao C here, which is C plus, which as I've mentioned earlier, does not exist. So there's a little trickery for the um, consumer right there. How are you doing on time? Oh. All right. Okay, halfway through, all right. So it's an all stainless steel blade lock cylinder. This is the inside of the cover. Let's take a look at the English, which is always fun to read, the Chinglish. Um, all stainless steel, super C-class, which, as I may remind you, does not exist. Flat tumbler lock series, the latest patent product. All stainless steel, two side washers, six locking points, dual 12 times two flat tumbler mechanism, which is two times 12 times two, which is 48. Well, I don't know why they just didn't go ahead and say 48 moving parts. That would be much easier. Um, and the rest of it is, it's actually a CNC precision machine, supposedly, which I kind of I would hope it is, but I haven't taken it apart because if I do take it apart, everything's going to fly everywhere and it will never have 48 pieces after I take it apart. <laughs> okay, on to the next thing. So this is the, it, how it comes in. It also comes with a key duplication card, but it does nothing, as I've told you already, because if you have the key duplication card, you can say, I have authorization to duplicate this key, but you're never going to get this key duplicated because no locksmith in all of China is going to hold this blank. Well, the manufacturer, the manufacturer this is, it's really hard. To, most manufacturers in China just make the lock and then they get out of the business, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's for obvious reasons because, yeah. So you're never going to get blanks for this. Yeah, all the machinery is the same, you know? So, so they have the same machinery. So if you think about the machinery to use, make wagons, it's not very precise, is it? So when you uh, use it to make locks, it's still not going to be very precise. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's how we get the crappy locks. But there are also some good manufacturers. Like this is probably the manufacturer. I don't know if it's still in existence. I hope it is. But it makes a pretty good lock. Uh, OK. So what do these, all these sliders make this lock? It's bump proof, there are no pins to bump. Well, you can try bumping downstairs if you want to know what that is. It's very difficult to pick. So has anyone tried to pick around 48 different wafers separately? No? Okay. If anyone wants to try to pick this lock, it'll be downstairs. And if you can pick the lock, I guess you can have it. So, so anyone would like to pick this lock downstairs? All right, all right, whatever. Drill resistance. It's got 48 different sliders, and you need to drill out six points in the cylinder. And the cylinder is stainless steel, so you're not going to get very far with that. All right, now on to the better section, security through design. Now, I like seeing this part. Um, it's well-designed locks and or improvements on current lock designs, so very good improvements. All right, the Yuema Lock Company, which I like to call the Abloy of China because They've been constantly updating their product to be more and more unpickable, trying to make it as, and I think with the most recent update, it's been basically like the Abloy Protec 2, which I'll explain in just a minute. So I call this the, the I'm sure that you've heard of the UML lock company at some point, some of you like that are really into it. So yeah, it's the Abloy of China. The evolution of the UML lock company, we first what happened was the smiley keyway lock, if we can have the, uh, Document camera, please. If I can get this lock. All right, here we are. Um, it's got this little keyway that looks like a smiley face, which is why I call it the smiley keyway. It's got ears. Yeah, it's got ears too. It looks like the uh, a typical face, you know. All right, there's that, and the key looks like that. So uh, let me find the key. Uh, the key looks like this. 
yeah, it looks like that. So uh, back to the slide, please. So, yeah, I'm going to give the guy behind the curtain a big workout, you know, hitting the, switching the thing. So the second kind is the 750 they came out with. This is a slider system with one sidebar. Yeah, now the sidebars for these locks are really special. They're reverse sidebars, which means uh, for those of you that don't really understand locks, just tune out here because it's just more for the people who understand locks. A reverse sidebar pushes into, actively pushes into the pins instead of being pushed out. Like a Medico sidebar is push, being pushed out. The UMS sidebar is being pushed in, which makes it much, much harder to pick. So the 750 is a slider system. So um, can we have the document camera, please? Thanks. It looks like this. It looks like that. It's the same, it's basically the same deal with the reverse sidebar, except it's got this, uh, it doesn't look like a face anymore, unfortunately. And uh, this is what the key looks like. It's a typical engraved key. All right, now back to the, uh, the thing, please. Thanks. And we have the 750K, which is a big step forward. Basically what they did is they made this lock free spinning. Because it, when you have a reverse sidebar, it's very easy to make the lock free spinning, which I'm not going to go too into detail of. But if you want to ask me about this, I'll explain it to you downstairs. So basically what it is is, uh, just give me a second. I need to get it out of uh, the depths of uh, Tartarus down here. Um, can we have the document camera? I'm sorry. Basically what it is is that um, this cylinder right here, it looks like yeah, it looks angry, doesn't it? It's got a different face now. It's like, ah, I'm going to eat you, you know. So uh, basically, what's so special about this cylinder is that if the any key is inserted, it can turn the cylinder. It'll still turn around. So uh, if you've been down to the uh, lock sport village downstairs, you'll know that you need to put tension on the lock in order to pick it. And what this does is take that option away by making it free spinning, which is pretty evil for the lock pickers, but good for uh, homeowners and stuff. And only the right key will actually cause the lock to uh, unlock like that. So is it possible to even take it? Wait. Theoretically, yes, because you could technically slide it back and forth and feel for where it drops in, but it's very hard. It's basically impossible to pick, but there is that little possibility right there. Oh, can we have the uh, slides again? Slides. Oh, thank you. Um, and then we got the 730K, which is the same thing. You see that smiley face? Actually, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask for the um, <laughs> document camera. Yeah, I'm uh, OK. OK. Um, I'm going to pull this chair over so I don't. Uh, so basically, this is the uh, 730K. As you can see, it's an actual smiley face this time. See, it's smiling at you guys. <laughs> you know, the Chinese seem to like to make locks with faces on them. So yeah, that's good. And basically, it also freely turns whenever uh, any little torque is put on it. But only the correct key will actually turn the tailpiece, which you'll see in a second, like, like that. Like that. OK. So yes, basically, these locks, I think, are um, pretty tough to pick. But can we have the slides, please? Sorry. Thanks. So these locks are very hard to pick. Now the 760. So let's, uh, here's the uh, UML Classic with the smiley face and the ears. That's upside down. Uh, I've demonstrated that already. So the UMA 760, the Abloy Protect 2 of China. It premiered just this year in March or February or April or January, I'm not sure. But it premiered this year in 2016. They presented it at the Canton Fair, which is this big fair where all of the uh, lock manufacturers in China go to show off their new products. And Yuema was there, and they owned that show, you know? They were like, well, our new lock design, well, this Yuema 760, we're going to hold a public picking and bi or bypass contest with a 1 million yuan reward, which is not a lot. It's uh, $149,852, but still a decent amount. And so they held this contest. And, they, and for those who bought their lock, they gave you a 10 times money back guarantee if your stuff got stolen. So basically, if you could prove that it was the lock that got picked, they would pay you 10 times your money uh, worth of the stuff. Of the lock or your stuff? Your stuff, obviously not the lock. <laughs> OK, uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. I may be a little condescending at points, but OK. OK, so anyway, uh, let's go on. 
this is what it is. So you can see these pretty ladies um, going like, oh, these people are world Chinese champion lock. They said international, but I don't think anyone internationally went there to go try to pick the locks. Did anyone here try to go? Oh, yeah. So did anyone here try to go and pick? No, probably not. If you're here listening to this, then you probably didn't go. Um, so basically, none of these people could get it open. And it was there was a 1 million RMB bonus. So there was that. So they're pretty confident that this lock cannot be picked. So basically what they did is that they said that this free spinning design, which is basically impossible to pick, is not good enough for them. It's not good enough for us. We want to be better. Now, this is completely different than the American like lock companies, where they just make the smallest improvements to try to keep the patent going. But in China, pat as you may know, patents don't really exist <laughs> for the term. So basically, in order to stay ahead of the group, they have to uh, keep innovating. And so this is what the lock looks like. Uh, you'll notice that I have no homemade pictures because I have not managed to obtain one of these locks yet because they haven't been released. Uh, the one that they have released is, um, is in a safe, which is very heavy. And uh, <laughs> if you can imagine me lugging that thing up to the 18th floor to uh, do a presentation on it. So basically, what the, why it makes it so, curious, so, so secure is they've taken a step back, and they've gotten rid of the reverse sidebar. They've done a regular sidebar. But instead, they put in a disc, like a slider blocking system. So whenever you try to put tension on it, it's going to lock all the sliders in place. So you can't manipulate them when you're putting tension on it. So the only way to unlock it is to have all the sliders at the exact correct position before rotating, which is basically the concept of the Abloy Protec 2. So this is the Abloy of China. That's why I'm talking about that. All right, uh, another weird name, Omelo. Um, the Omelo Rotation 3D Design, a reboot of the Corbin M. Hart lock. Now, Corbin M. Hart has been one of my favorite locks, except I don't have one of them, so how can it be my favorite? But still, it's one of my favorite designs of locks. Uh, this is basically, I don't know if they designed it themselves or they went and bought a Corbin M. Hart lock, but this is a, a very interesting take on the design. So the first thing you'll notice when you buy this lock is that it comes in a can. <laughs> I'm like, wait a moment, this lock comes in a can. I mean, if you had this next to soft drinks, I'm pretty sure someone would like try to drink it or something. But uh, yeah. But the root, why is it, why, so you may ask, why is it in a soft drink can? Well, this one doesn't, what, I'm sorry? It's okay. You can say it out loud. Um, so basically what it is is that to keep the keys safe. So you know that if you order off online or from a locksmith, you know that they haven't been inside and copying the keys with wax or whatever to try and get into your house. So this makes sure that you can't, um, well, steal the keys or something. When you open the can, you get how to install a lock on the top, and you get the lock cylinder nestled in there with some foam. It looks very snug and cute and stuff. But uh, it's the, the problem with the can, having a can is that the edges are razor sharp. So uh, whenever you try to go and get the lock out of it, you get like stabbed by the edges of the can. Yeah, it's another level of security, except it's kind of in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah, so it becomes a beverage can if it does that, so. Okay, only if you're a vampire, but okay. Next, so this is what the lock looks like. And uh, I'll talk about this lock under the document camera because that's a little interesting. If Could I have the document camera, please? All right. So this lock is special. So how does a Corbin M. Hart lock work? It has interlocking pins. Actually, could I have asked for the slide, please? Sorry. <laughs> I know, I, I, I gotta thank the guy after I'm done with it because I really gave him a workout there. Uh, so a Corbin M. Hart, uh, I got these from these two websites, uh, uses a set of interlocking pins in order to allow the pins to be both rotated and lifted. So it requires these to be lined up and you can see the Corbin M. Hart key has angled cuts on it. A bit like a Medico if you've heard of that lock company before, except instead of using a sidebar, it uses interlocking pins. Now let's take a look at the OML or Omelo lock? Well, it uses the exact same mechanism, except with a different key. So let me make sure there's nothing after that. Okay. So uh, document camera, I promise I won't change my mind this time. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
I think the. Oh. oh. All right. Yeah, he's giving it to me. All right. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna wait a little bit. It's okay. I don't mind. All right, now I do mind, but still. Uh oh. There we go. Thanks. Oh, uh, I promise I won't change my mind again. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, this is the key. Uh, you'll notice that it looks like a slider-based key. On this side, it has like a left and right. It's very gentle. But something else that's special about this lock, uh, this key actually, is that not only do this, does this little track uh, go left and right, but it also has depth to it. So it goes down and up as well as left to right, which is why they call this the 3D lock. So the key is three-dimensional. So the left and the right of the, the curvature of the uh, tracks on this side, right here, the curvature of this track uh, rotates the pins and the depth of the track lifts it up to the correct height. So there's that. And uh, okay, if you wanna see the lock in demonstration, this is uh, all Chinese locks use this basically design. It's a Euro cylinder because most locks in Europe are shaped this way, so it's called a Euro cylinder. And it works. On this side, it works, oh well, just uh, about quality. Even this lock is not without its quality issues. Is whenever I insert the key onto this side, it doesn't come out. So uh, yeah, it's uh, very hard to get out. Oh, there we go. But uh, yeah, so that's um, a little quality issue. But that's fine. It's the lock mechanism that we're interested in. Um, OK, the next one. The Jiawei rotating disk design, which I think, uh, can we have the, um, oh, sorry, can we have the uh, slides, thanks. The Jiawei rotating disk design, which I think is an improvement on the Abloy Classic design. Not the Abloy Protect, but the Abloy Classic design. So, so let's take a look at the box. The main thing that we I notice is the fact that it uses the designation D+, which as I re said, does not exist. The second thing I noticed is that this company is actually a member of ASA Abloy, which I looked it up, and it is. So they're not just putting it on there just to like see, oh, we're part of ASA Abloy, you know. We're just, yeah, so they're actually a member of ASA Abloy, and the box is really good. It's like a blue velvet. It's very heavy. The box is probably more expensive than the lock, but still. <laughs> yes, the box, it's very, it's harder to get it out of the box. Okay, so this is what it comes in. You have this, uh, when you open the boxes on the lid, it's singing the praises of the lock and the little mechanism. So you'll notice that locks in China, they tend to, uh, they tend to uh, try to show off their mechanism. So like uh, if we can see the Omelo lock, this was on their website showing off how their lock works. And um, so this one, they're also showing off their locks and how they work. So here are the two a keys, as we can see. These are for the people installing the lock. And you'll notice something that is a little um, weird is that they have this key, oh, five minutes, key duplication card over here, which is a problem because, well, um, you can go and duplicate and make the owner keys with that card. So that's not supposed to be there. And as you can see, the owner keys are uh, in this little plastic box over here that you have to break the box to open. It looks pretty substantial, but you have to like, destroy the box to get the keys. And here are two cylinder caps and here's a cylinder. I'm gonna hurry it up a little bit because I only have five minutes left. Uh, yeah, we'll keep the next speaker out, we love this. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want more of this, I'll be downstairs and we can talk about it. Oops, so, oh, come on, what am I doing? What the? All right, here's what the lock looks like in the front. It looks a bit similar like the Aploy Classic, uh, the profile, if you wanna be like, really exact about it, but there, there's that, and there's the Abloy profile. What's the difference? Well, you'll notice on the Jiawei key, we've got um, a, a track instead of angles, like on the profile. So basically what this means is that instead of needing to turn at 90 degrees to, uh, to move the disks, uh, so there's the insides of those locks, the disks on the inside, the tracks move the disks to the correct angle while you're inserting the key. So. This saves you um, the need to turn it 90 degrees to get it out. And also, it can be turned in both directions. So how do we get into the locks? It's like picking any other Labloy locks. And it also has false gates. So free floating and spinning locks, the future of, do I call this? No, it's not the future of mechanical locks. I don't know why they put that there. Here's the minimalistic Boseidon lock, which is a company. 
It's pretty minimal, it comes in this tin, and you'll notice there's a box there with the keys. You have to break that box as well to get into the keys, which really hurt me because that was like really high quality box for the keys and it was like acrylic and it looked more expensive than the lock and the keys inside the box, so yeah. So why is it free spinning? You'll see, notice that's pretty minimalistic. There are no wards in the keyway, nothing. And whenever you put any torque on the lock, it turns a little bit and that's the key over there. And you'll see it has two tracks running down the side of it. Okay, now we're done with this. Uh, we're very close. The other categories, some other interesting locks. The Cadman GT series locks. You'll notice that this looks exactly like another company's lock. Multi-lock multi interactive. Yes, that is correct. Uh, it looks like the multi-lock. There's a multi-lock key and there's a Cadman uh, GT key. But the main difference is, if you'll notice, and if time will allow me, is that it has this extra little thing here on which the multi-lock key in, on it is absent. And what this is, is a magnet, which pulls down this little magnetic element here, which actually surprised me because most of the time, uh, the key might have a magnet on it, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and here is the package. We've got the uh, advertising over here. And you'll notice over here, I know it's a little blurry, uh, but it says, Beijing Zhuanyong, which basically means exclusive to Beijing. So basically what they're doing is they're geographically restricting the di distribution of these locks since there's only a, a certain amount of combinations before you have to reuse them. And so basically what they're doing is they're uh, uh, trying to restrict the geographical location. But the ironic thing is uh, I, the guy who sent me this lock didn't, was not in Beijing, so wherever. it didn't work. And now, TSA keys. Okay, there's going to be a talk about this tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Uh, you should go listen to it. Uh, Night Owl is going to be there and DarkSim905, a uh, bunch of interesting people. TSA keys. So this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. So, well, uh, they have complete, uh, the Chinese have a disregard to all the security procedures in other countries. So they've gone ahead and mass produced the keys to the TSA locks that are on your luggage. And so, here it is, those keys. And I have some with me right here, if they'll turn on the document camera. Please, please, oh, thanks. Uh, here's what they look like, and they work perfectly on this lock. Uh, if I'll just hang this there. Here's a TSA lock. I'll just put the key in there, and it's open. Okay, so that's not supposed to be like that. And so, uh, you know I'm not supposed to have this key in the first place because, well, it's restricted. Well, not that restricted anymore, but still. And now, questions. I don't know if we still have time. Questions? Two minutes? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, questions. Yeah, so are you doing anything with DLE or um, other frequencies? Oh, I'm not too familiar with that. I'm very sorry. All right, any other questions, or do we have to go? Uh, well, um, wait for tomorrow night, that is, yes. My slides, if you want them, I'll put them somewhere and uh, or I'll, uh, Night Owl can get the distribution in, all right. Okay, uh, anything else or uh, I think we should get going. All right, thank you, thank you. This was my uh, first presentation ever in front of people, so thank you.